Hello, loud friends. This week we talk about speaking more fluently, something that I'm still dreaming about, actions, and finally pipelines in Laravel 11.38. Let's go. First, we can now define email rules more fluently. In this test, we're making just sure that this create user action creates a new user, which works. That's already good. But now let's take a look at this action. It's a very simple one for our use case here. And we're using here some specific rules. And here we're taking a look at the email where we just say it's required an email, which works. But now we have something new. We have also the rule class where we can also say now this should be an email. And now we have this fluent helper where we can say this should be strict. And let's also prevent spoofing. And now we have this nice syntax here to use for our email rules, which I believe is very cool. And also our test is still parsing, so this works as well. Thank you, Sander. Next, we have a little update on the route list command. When you take a look at your routes with PHP Addison route list, you can see you get a list, of course, of all your routes with all the different information that you can get about those routes. And we can also filter them. Take a look when we use help, we can see we can filter them by method, by name, by domain, by path. But now we can also filter them by action. And this is something that's new. Let's try this out. PHP artisan route list. And we want to filter by the action. And let's say the action should include something about password. And you can see we get back what the action, like here, this is the controller, the class, which the route is attached to, but also the method here on the right. And these are the ones that include password in the action as well. So if you want to filter by action, you can do this now as well. Thank you, Mick. And finally, let me show you a cool update on the pipeline helper in Laravel. I have this test, I want to make sure that when we call a specific action, create subscription action here in this case, that we see a specific user inside the database. So this is one of the jobs that this action has. And if we run this, this will pass, which is great. And if we take a look at this action here, you can see that we're using the pipeline pattern, which was the subject of one of my latest videos. So you will find the link above here as well if you'd like to learn more about the pipeline pattern. So we send our user data here through and then we create a user, we send a welcome email. So maybe there's some more actions that need to run when we send this data through the pipeline here. So there's a lot we can do with this data and with this action. And then here at the end, when everything is finished, we run this complete method. And maybe you want to change the status of the user, you do something else if everything worked out well. So let's add here a dump and die in the complete method, which again we run after this has successfully run. And fair enough, we see now this complete user which we have here in this method. Okay, but now we also have this cleanup method. Let's put this in here as well. And let's run this as well, this cleanup here. Let's get rid of the complete method. So maybe after every action, every time we run this pipeline, we want to clean it up, maybe clean something up in the database, delete some files from the system. So there are many ways this could work and you would need this. So let's run this and fair enough, we see clean up here. We're running this here in the dem method and then here we're dumping this out. Okay, but let's bring this one in here, but now let's imagine inside our create user, we're running a specific exception so something is not working as expected. What do you think is going to happen now with those two calls here? Let's run this and yeah, we see this exception but none of those here are being called. But when you think about it, cleanup is probably something that you would want to run every time the pipeline is being used, no matter if it is a success or not. Or maybe especially if it's not working, then you want to clean up. But this is now not working anymore because this then method will never be run because this only runs if everything was working successfully. And now we're adding this new finally call here, which is new and inside here, we're providing a short closure. And here we call now our cleanup. So this means we're getting rid of this. And if you run our test now again, you will see that this cleanup method is being run, although we have this exception inside our create user. 
And that's working because if we check out where this is being used, back down here, you can see that we are using try and finally here, which is functionality of try catch, where we also have this finally. And if we have set a finally callback, this will be called here, even though there was an exception. So the next time you think about using the then method, think about that this only runs if everything is working as expected. But if there are exceptions, then you maybe want to use the finally method, which will run whatever happens. This is going to run for the pipeline. Thank you, Nuno. That's it for this week. Thank you all for your contributions and see you the next time. Bye.